Rio, Emilia, Phoebe and Alicia. We'll be following them going about their daily lives as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. Today, we're with 10-year-old Rio. Hello. Rio's favourite things are his dog, Rosso, and sport. I love running and playing football. When Rio was a year old, he had his right leg removed or amputated because, well, I'll let him explain. When I was a baby, I didn't have an ankle joint and knee joint, so I couldn't walk. Now Rio has a prosthetic leg. Actually, he has two. His everyday leg, which he uses for walking and football, and his blade, which has helped him win lots of running medals. I want to be a Paralympian like Johnny Peacock. Wow, that's Rio with his hero Johnny, who's won two Paralympic gold medals for the 100 metres. Rio's blade is really only for the racetrack, but he's wearing it today because his day leg is out of action. Because when I was playing cricket with my friends, I slipped and then my leg broke. Luckily, he's due a new day leg anyway, which is being made by his prosthetist, Pat. As you're swinging the leg around now, does it feel like it's sliding off at all? No. Because Rio's still growing, Matt makes the top bits or sockets bigger every 9 to 12 months, and Rio gets to choose a new design. Um, I want that one. That one's quite cool. Mm-hmm. The new leg won't be ready for a week, which means staying on his blade and no football. Will you cope, Rio? Y E S. Well, yes. Catch me next time. Bye! Bye, Rio! <laughs> Meet Rio, Emilia, Phoebe, and Alicia. We're following them across this series as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. Say hi to 10 year old Alicia. Hi. Alicia has recently been diagnosed with inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD. Inside of my gut, everything is inflamed, and because of this, sometimes I have sharp stomach pain, I feel sick, and I have to go to the toilet quite a lot. Another symptom of IBD is extreme tiredness. Before I used to always walk to school and now I can't do that since I get very tired so I have to take the bus. After school, Alicia loves getting out and about on her bike. Cycling's really fun. But unfortunately, since being diagnosed with IBD, Alicia hasn't been able to ride it as much. I get really tired very quickly and you have to come inside. Luckily, she has plenty of other activities. <laughs> and who's this furry friend? Kitty is my kitten, who's four months old. My mum got her for me because I wasn't going outside as much and then got quite bored inside. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the hoop trick. Wow, <laughs> I've never been able to teach Chris the hoop trick. Alicia's only recently been diagnosed with IBD, so her doctors are still monitoring her progress closely and working out what will help relieve her symptoms. My doctor arranged an appointment um, with a dietitian, so it's going to be a really exciting but nervous experience for me at the same time. I call this feeling nervous sighted. Ooh, new word. See you next time, Alicia. Bye! Bye! Meet Rio, Emilia, Phoebe and Alicia. We're following them across the series as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. Today, we're catching up with 10-year-old Rio. Hello. Rio wears a prosthetic leg because he was born with a rare condition called tibial aplasia, which means his lower leg didn't grow properly. Matt, who makes Rio's prosthetic legs, feels two new ones every year because Rio is growing. A blade for running and a day leg for football. We're here today because Matt is going to give me my new day leg to try on. And Rio has chosen the design himself. Hello, how are you? Good, thank you. Good. Now Rio needs to make sure it's a perfect fit. It felt like I was walking like that because one leg was taller and one smaller, so I was like that. So it's off to the workshop for a quick reshape. How's it feeling now, Rio? It's great. I think we're good to go. It feels good that I know my leg's not going to fall off. Let's go and do some physio. Really try and get those hips pointing forwards. Yeah, that's it. 
Rio's physiotherapist Amy will help him get used to his day leg. Very good. We are trying to strengthen my muscles. Hardest, I would probably say, is the wobble cushion. The most fun was probably football. <laughs> we'll be seeing Rio again soon when he's got his new running blades. Catch me next time. Meet Ruby, Hayden, Holly and Toller. We'll be following them across the series as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. They've given us exclusive access to their lives as they undergo treatment. Let's meet our first outpatient, Ruby. Hello, Ruby. These are my dogs. That one right there at the door is Bo. Hi, Bo. And the one right in the back is Kuko. Ruby has leukaemia, a type of cancer which means she has too many white blood cells. As well as having lots of hospital visits, she's also been receiving chemotherapy at home for nearly a year. Today is Tuesday and today Triskin, the home care lady, and she did my dressing. As you can see, it's been changed. Ruby has regular chemo, sometimes as much as four times a week. Hello, good morning, Martha. How are you, gorgeous? Today, Nurse Donna is going to give her a series of injections which helps treat the leukaemia. I'm going to administer some chemotherapy through a central line. So we're just setting up all our syringes um, and all the equipment that we need. In case you're wondering what a central line is, it's a tube with a connection at one end for a syringe, while the other end goes into the veins by Ruby's heart. This is my line and they put chemo through it in, instead of having injections all the time. And with this, it has to go in over about three to five minutes. Chemo makes me feel really tired. As well as having all these treatments at home, Ruby also has to go to the hospital regularly. Each time I go to hospital and I have treatment, I get a bead. Yellow is overnight sleeps, the white is for chemo, and these little ones here are just for bravery. My favourite is this one, for losing your hair. Wow, Chris, Ruby has hundreds of beads. Yes, Aunt, and soon she'll be getting another one as she has a hospital visit coming up. Find out how I get on next time. Bye! Bye, Ruby! <laughs> Meet Caden, Maisie, Bolu and Millie. We'll be following them across the series as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. They invite us into their lives, at home and as they undergo treatment. Meet 11-year-old Maisie. Hello. Maisie lives with her mum, dad, brother and dog Poppy. She has celiac disease. It means that you can't have gluten, which is wheat, barley, rye, malt and oats. And as a result, Maisie is unable to eat everyday food, such as bread, pasta and pizza. If I eat gluten, I end up getting the runs, I get sharp stomach pains, I feel sick, and I just basically want to lie in bed and go to sleep. Maisie is so sensitive to gluten that everything food-related has to be separated to avoid her coming into contact with it. So I have my own ketchup and butter to make sure that no cross-contamination goes on there. We've started doing a lot more home cooking and baking since I've been celiac. So we make gluten-free chicken nuggets. We grated frozen gluten-free loaf and then we put it onto the chicken. It's lots of fun. Luckily for Maisie, there are also special gluten-free versions of some of her favourite takeaway foods. So we're watching a film and I've got a gluten-free pizza and Jess has a normal pizza because she's normal. So we're enjoying our sleepover. Find out how I get on next time. Bye. Meet Ruby, Hayden, Holly and Toller. We're following them across the series as they let us know what it's like to be a regular hospital outpatient. They've given us exclusive access to their lives as they undergo treatment. Let's meet our outpatient, Holly. Hello, Holly. Hi, everyone. So now I'm going to give you a little tour of my house. So firstly, here is my little brother, Michael. Ooh, nice Hulk outfit. Hey, don't leave me in here. Nine-year-old Holly has cerebral palsy, a condition which impacts muscle control and movement. In my case, it affects all four of my limbs, but it affects my legs a lot more than it does my arms. 
With cerebral palsy, the brain doesn't communicate properly with the body's muscles. It's like if you're in like a cafe and the Wi-Fi is down, you can't send a text message to someone. This is a table that me and my brother get washed at in the morning instead of me having to stand at the sink and get washed. Cerebral palsy does have quite a big impact on my day-to-day -day life. From appearance, it looks like it's like really painful and it's really hard, but it's really not. You just gotta go with the flow and kinda get on with it, you know? This is our accessible shower room. There I have my shower chair, which I sit in to have a shower because obviously I can't stand up while I'm having a shower. I really like it because I get to do it myself. I have to go to physio with Rosemary in school every one to two weeks. Holly has regular physio treatment, not just at school, but also at hospital and at home. You ready? Ta -da! Ta -da! Let's find out how we get on next time. Bye! <laughs>
a type of cancer which means she has too many white blood cells. Last time, we saw Ruby having a treatment called chemotherapy at home. Chemotherapy is a medicine which kills cancer cells. But not everything can be done at home. Today, I am going on an adventure. What? To a tropical island. Really? No, she's pulling your leg. Ruby's come to hospital. When I first came in, they said, you'll always be in room 12. Really? Yeah. Oh, room 12 it is. She's here for a lumbar puncture. A small needle is put into Ruby's lower spine to give her a dose of chemotherapy to protect her spinal fluid and brain from cancer cells. The treatment is helping to fix Ruby, but she has to deal with some tricky side effects. This is Ruby a year ago. Now steroid medicine has made Ruby's face temporarily swell up and the chemotherapy has made her lose her hair. You still look great, Ruby but it will grow back. Bon and she's at risk of getting an infection, so Ruby has other treatments to keep her healthy. <laughs> What's happening now, Ruby? We are near the end of our transfusion. This is a top-up of healthy blood. And what's the yellow stuff, Ruby? Custard. Custard? Really? Yummy. No, she's got you again. This is a bag of platelets. And they are for repairing scabs. So if I didn't have this and I had a cut, it wouldn't repair very quickly. Two weeks of treatment later, Ruby has some news. I don't know whether you can see, but my hair is coming back. Well, that's brilliant, Ruby. Uh, so that's a good day for you? Yeah. So you must be feeling very pleased. Yeah. Good. I'm wondering if we should uh, replace old Dr. Zand with you. You get on some green scrubs, we could uh, sort you out with the job. Oi! Okay. Think about that, Dr. Zand. Yeah. Thanks, Ruby. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. See you soon, Ruby.